Sorry. Tell Cody she was going to do Christmas with us this year because of what's going on between her and Cody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Happily Ever Reality. Today we are talking about McKelty and Tony's commentary about Season 19, Episode 5 of Sister Wives. The first thing I want to mention is what McKelty said about the timeline of the show and the storylines. She said it's really confusing for her to watch because she knows sometimes that that stuff didn't happen when it's happening on the show. And she specifically refers to Mary and the release from the church or the release from her marriage that was granted by the church. She said it didn't happen at this time of year. So it wasn't happening between Thanksgiving and Christmas like we see on the show. But she says that she believes they do that just to speed up things. And hopefully we'll be able to catch up during the season and we won't be so far behind. But yes, she says it is confusing, just like many of us viewers think it is confusing as well. They are so far behind. I'm going to be thrilled if they jump ahead and catch us up. McKelty answered a question a viewer had about filming the couch confessionals. And she said that it can be a month, a few months, or almost a whole year after an event has happened. And that explains why in episode four, you see Cody and Robin having their disagreement. Cody says he doesn't understand what he did wrong. He's being punished for a crime he didn't commit. But then during a couch confessional, he acknowledges that a few mistakes were made. I feel like he still avoided accountability, but it, it seemed like something had changed for him. He could at least see that there were things that happened that shouldn't have. And I feel like during the argument with Robin, he wasn't acknowledging anything. Like he didn't feel like he was an inv involved in anything that went wrong. So, you know, if that filming of the couch confessional was a lot later, something may have happened to change his opinion, which makes sense. I'm sure you all remember this part of the show, but I'm going to put it in here again, just to remind you. I mean, begging Janelle to have a relationship with her. Janelle's a relationship coward. McKelty responds to that by making a great point. She says, Janelle is the one who has a good relationship with her own kids, the other kids, with other sister wives. So Janelle is not the problem. She is not a relationship coward. She also talks w about Janelle while she's watching it. She says that Janelle is being fair to her dad. Janelle's not gossiping. She's not saying bad stuff. She's not talking bad about him to the kids. Janelle is really being level-headed and trying to keep things good. I mean, as good as they can be given everything that's happened, but that is something that McKelty acknowledges. She also talks about how well Gabriel is handling this and how it seems like he's really thought about how he wants to respond to, ev to everything that Cody is saying. McKelty also mentioned during the live that the kids don't talk about Cody. They talk about their own lives when they communicate with each other. Contrary to what Cody believes, he is not the center of their universe. So when they communicate, they are not all gossiping about him. She says they talk about their own lives. She also said something that was sort of similar to what I said when I was doing a recap. I don't know if it was the last episode or the one before. She said, who knows what to believe on this show? That's how I feel. Because the timeline is so messed up, and now we're hearing conflicting stories, and even the way they're talking about the past, they're, they're telling us stuff they didn't tell us back then, and it's changing my view of things. I don't, I don't know what to believe. Like, I know whose side I lean toward, but it just, it's so messed up. And she said, who knows what to believe on the show. She was also asked about Dayton. Um, someone said, where does Dayton live now? And she says she doesn't know. She thought he was going to be doing a master's program, but she didn't know where. And it wasn't surprising, but it just felt like it was more evidence that this family doesn't communicate well. Because even if she wasn't close to Dayton and she's not talking to him, it seems like Cody or Robin might have mentioned it just to update her on one of her siblings. You know, maybe one of the other kids that are close to him would have mentioned it to her, but... She actually doesn't know where he's living now. Okay, I'm going to put in a clip from 
episode five so that I can help you guys remember something that happened. Cody's been emotional about this with Mary. Oh, I'm absolutely relieved that it's done. You guys have to let me know when you saw that in the episode. Did you let out an audible laugh? That part actually had me laughing. But when McKelty saw it and her and Tony were talking about it, I believe it was McKelty that kind of questioned if Cody was faking some sort of heartbreak for Robin. Like, was it possible when he was with her alone, he was faking sadness and heartbreak because he was sitting there with Robin and she was actually that upset? Because at this point, it doesn't look like Cody actually cares when he's talking about it during the couch confessionals. He does not seem to care at all. But I wonder if when he's alone with her, if he is faking that emotion because she's so sad. So I want to talk a little bit about Christmas that year. I think we're going to see that in the next episode, maybe. But McKelty said it was the most boring Christmas ever because it was just like a small get together with her mom and her mom's kids. It didn't feel like Christmas because she was used to the whole family trying to get together and it being a little bit chaotic and noisy. So she just said it was really boring. She said she actually met David for the first time on Christmas Day. And she says the timeline for Christine and David dating isn't right. This is one of those times where they're not showing what really happened. She says she thinks her mom just didn't want to go public with it yet and have cameras involved immediately. So she kind of kept dating David private and then presented it in front of the cameras as if they were having their first and second dates. I don't think it was like a malicious thing. You know, I can't blame her. I wouldn't want to have cameras around when I'm just dating someone. I don't know if I like them. And, you know, I think she just didn't want to share all that right away. But then they wanted to present it that way on the show. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. But it is, there's like a timeline issue there. And I did think it was interesting that McKelty met David on Christmas. I don't know if I would have done that. I don't know. McKelty laughed when Cody said he was never patriarchal. You know, he mentioned that in this episode. She said, yes, he was. Um, She also was asked about how sick Cody was when he had COVID. And she said he probably had man COVID, but she doesn't actually know that. She doesn't want to minimize it. She, he could have been really sick, but she, she knows how men react to being sick sometimes. And she could see Cody being that way. Another thing that McKelty commented on was the part of the show where Gabriel was telling Janelle that Cody had said he was, he wasn't loyal. He was like, you're not loyal like your mother. And then we see Cody deny it. And McKelty pretty much said what all of us viewers have said. I've read so many comments from you guys that have said the same thing. And that is, we watch Cody say it. We hear him say it. The conversations are filmed. We know that Cody says that type of stuff. So it's really bizarre that he denies it. Does he not remember at all? Does he not remember any of these conversations? Because they're filmed. We know that he'll accuse the kids of not being loyal. There was one more thing that she said that really stood out to me. And she mentioned it in the last video. And I mentioned it in the previous video I made about them doing commentary. She talked about how Cody makes these blanket statements and he'll say, these kids, the kids, and he's talking about all of them. And she's like, doesn't he realize that he's also talking about the kids that are minors? He's talking about Truly. He's talking about Savannah when he says the kids. And she mentioned this includes Robin's kids as well. So this is my take on Cody. When he is saying the kids, he is not referring to Robin's kids. And I don't think McKelty sees it that way, but that is how I see it. And I want to know in the comments what you guys think. But to me, when Cody is saying the kids, he's talking about all the kids that aren't Robin's kids. And then when he's going to talk about Robin's kids, he's going to say Robin's kids, or he's going to say our kids. 
Because there's that part where he's saying, I just want to work on saving my relationship with you, Robin. And then I think McKelty is thinking, oh, dad's only going to work on the relationship with Robin. But to me as a viewer, I think Cody's going to work on the relationship with Robin and the people in Robin's household, her children. Because I think he sees them very separately. I don't think Aurora, Brianna, Dayton, Ari, and Saul are in the same group as the other kids. But in McKelty's mind, they're all the kids. When Cody is making a blanket statement, it's not, it's not referencing Robin's children. Not in my opinion. And a part of me wonders if McKelty doesn't realize that because she thought she was like on her dad's good side, right? Like dad and I had a great relationship. I have a good relationship with Robin. We're seeing each other. So I'm included. We're all included as one group where maybe the other kids like Janelle's boys don't think that. They realize the kids are all the kids that are not in Robin's house. So let me know down in the comments what you thought about all of this. Go ahead and click like if you liked this video and subscribe if you want to see more. I hope you guys will come back to Happily Ever Reality. On Monday, I'll be doing a recap and commentary on episode six.